Jack Sweeney, and we're here with David Drollock, the CFO of SciTech Industries. And SciTech has done something rather remarkable over the last 18 months. It's actually uh, shrank its working capital by nearly 40%. Now, David, we know something like this happens with no small effort. And maybe you can just uh, tell us how uh, this effort uh, was triggered. Sure. Um, we knew we had an opportunity in working capital. We've been benchmarking ourselves versus our peer companies. And so we knew there was an opportunity to, to generate significant cash flow from improving working capital levels. So combine that with what we saw was our concern over the global economy in early 08. And uh, we started working on um, what, what steps could we take to uh, you know, generate cash flow should things get tight. And as everybody knows, around September of 2008, volume started to drop off pretty significantly. And what we did at that point was uh, uh, start to look hard at working capital and what we might do to start generating some cash. We started working with REL, who really came forward. We knew we had the opportunity. What we wanted to do was see the picture pull together and all the levers we can pull to improve upon it. And so once we had that knowledge in place, uh, we started at the beginning in 09 with uh, uh, improving our working capital in, in all areas, receivables, payables, and inventory. You talked about creating a burning platform. What exactly are you talking about when you say that? Well, the burning platform was that, as everybody knows, volumes are dropping up pretty significantly. And um, uh, investors were concerned about companies' liquidities and balance sheets. And so we had debt due in uh, October, $250 million of debt due in, in 2010. Uh, our revolver had about 120 million on it. They were concerned about uh, covenants, meeting covenants and the ratios and those things. So we had a multi uh, approach here to take, which was first uh, uh, amend our covenant based on a new level of sales and earnings that were coming through that we saw and we weren't sure when it was going to improve. Uh, refinance that debt, maintain our investment grade rating. And so the biggest lever we had to pull in at was working capital. In the meantime, you know, we had a new CEO come on board, uh, Shane Fleming, uh, our ex, uh, prior CFO, uh, CEO, David Lilly retired. And Shane, internal guy, came and took on board right in the beginning of uh, January 2009 when things were falling off pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, what we had to do was focus on is getting these liquidity issues out of everybody's way so we can focus on growing the company again. And what we didn't want to do was stop investing in our growth businesses. So we didn't want to stop R&D. We didn't want to stop any you know, capital investments we needed to make. So uh, we embarked on a program to reduce working capital and got the whole company involved around it. We had one metric for SciTech, which was uh, days net working capital. And we wanted to improve it by at least one turn. But hopefully we can get to two turns and we incentivized everybody along those ways. You talk about uh, the growing, trying to grow awareness of working capital in a cross-functional way. How, how did you do that? What exactly? Yeah, one of the things we started to do early on when we realized uh, uh, this would be an opportunity for us to get through the crisis in a, in a pretty easy fashion, because don't forget, working capital is your cheapest source of finance. It doesn't cost anything. You just have to get it. And uh, we, we started communicating to employees pretty early on how everything works. And what we started communicating to them is how everybody plays a role in it, from the customer service person to the credit and collection, from the, uh, from the demand planner to the manufacturer, you know, to our manufacturing plants who produce it. And we started looking all together and telling people, these are the various levers we can pull. And everybody knew their spot to do it. And what we did is we created, like, we have a credit council that they work together and uh, to make sure we have global processes. But uh, we started working with this. We put together a, uh, quote, a sort of a SWAT team to get at the uh, uh, initial working capital gains we started in Europe. And once we started getting some successes, we started talking about them. Then we started training the US. The Asians didn't want to fall far behind, so they started, they didn't even wait for our, our rollout program. They started calling us saying, what are you doing? We could start doing it right now. And so uh, it expanded about six months faster than we thought it was going to because people just saw the successes. And it, it brought together at a time when uh, companies didn't have a lot of good things to say. It brought about a measure of success that everybody can see that they were part of and really pulled the company together to a really exceed the goal that we set out to do. You talk about, uh, you said everybody began talking about it. Well, you know, how does finance really communicate? What were you doing to really help this, uh, this heightened yeah, awareness? That's true, true. The best part was that uh, this was not a finance project. It was uh, owned by supply chain, finance, the manufacturing operations. 
And what we got is our CEO and a business unit division presidents are behind the project also. So, and what we did is when we had our weekly working capital reviews during this time, we pulled together uh, the sales people, the, the manufacturing people, the supply chain people, we were all on the call. And we were talking about, you know, making progress on various metrics that we had. So it started bringing everybody on the call and everybody started saying, well, we need so-and-so to do this. We need sales to bring us better forecasts. We need supply chain to work their end of it. And everybody started talking about how they can work together better to make the process smoother. And uh, it just, you know, and working with uh, what we had learned from REL and, and the thing was having metrics that people can measure their success on. And once we got that in place, it had a life of its own and people started realizing that uh, this could be a real success story for the company. And uh, they all worked towards that goal. You also uh, educated your people quite a bit, I think, on the different types of customers that you have and how, you, how to approach those customers maybe a little differently. Yeah, one of the areas that we started on receivables was to do segmentation of our customers. And so we started looking at who pays on time, who's five days late, who's 20 days late. Um, and we started pulling that together. And then we also started looking at, trying to sort of look at where um, uh, the women has been selling them higher margin product versus lower margin products. And we started pulling this together. But once you start segmenting it, it let us go after the customers that really were the problem payers, right? And the other thing we did is we hired more collectors and put collectors on, and we were doing proactive calling. So we weren't waiting for something to be late. We were calling up seven days ahead and says, hey, is our invoice in the queue to get paid? Is there any problems with it that we can fix? We could do it right now. And so that proactivity really made a difference in reducing our past dues. Now, is this, uh, is this now in SciTech's DNA, this cash uh, management approach, or you know, a good times return? Or you know, how are you going to make sure that cash is still still part of what... Uh, uh, well, first, if we went back, we, we generated over $300 million of cash in this working capital program. If we went back to the old way, we'd give up $300 million of cash. No one wants to do that. And uh, I think it is in the DNA because people now understand that uh, cash is king, a strong balance sheet. And quite frankly, when we started going out to the employee population and saying, you know, we're bottom quartile in working capital when we, when we started this program, their reaction was, well, how did we get so bad? You know, why do we wait this long to start working on it? So I think the employees see this as something we want to maintain and continue going forward. We have all the metrics in place. People are excited about it because it's something that they can watch and we can actually provide the data. In certain cases at the operational level, they're looking at the data daily if they want to. So we have, we have metrics in place and as everybody knows, what gets measured gets done. That's one of the keys to it. But I, in fact, that uh, we started ingraining in people that it's not just earnings growth, it's managing the whole business. It's managing the balance sheet, it's managing the sales, and it's managing the cash flow. And everybody understands that that drives value for the company. David Drop, thank you for being with us. Okay, thank you very much.